Hi, you can heal family. It's November 25th and it is time for us to spend time together reading our Jesus Calling. So hopefully everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And um, now you're ready and here and willing to hear Jesus calling you closer to him today. I was sitting here though thinking before I got started like how... I don't know what the word is like special maybe for me it is to read something so personal because when you think about it when Jesus is talking to you it's very personal and then just sharing what I'm hearing from the Lord on YouTube <laughs> it's like okay so I kind of feel like my you can heal family is going to know me better than my real family or my friends or anybody else because usually this is a time where you reflect in, in a private space so yeah I was just thinking about that and I'm like well you're in it now you're in it deep so just keep going and just be yourself and trust that the Lord's going to do what he's going to do with the things I'm sharing and say and I'm and I ask God all the time to you know guard my mouth and make sure that the words I speak will bring life to people and hope. So that's my prayer for each of you listening. And again, thank you for spending this time with me. Now, if this is your first time, now I wonder how many times I've said the word time. <laughs> if this is your first time listening, my name is Sheena Major. I'm a life coach and I, my heart is to help people heal from unhealthy relationships and really learn to love themselves. Because I realize for me personally, when I started to figure out who I was and love who I was and believed I was who God says I was, I began healing from the pain of my past. And it's possible for you too. I have a book called You Can Heal. And in there, um, I share with you my story a little bit and just some things you can do to help you grow on your healing journey. Now with that said, we're gonna get started. And today we're talking again about being thankful. So it reads, thank me frequently as you journey through today. Now again, I have to say for people who are just listening, this is my voice you're hearing, but Jesus speaking directly to you. Thank me frequently as you journey through today. This practice makes it possible to pray without ceasing, as the Apostle Paul taught. If you are serious about learning to pray continually, the best approach is to thank me in every situation. These thankful prayers provide a solid foundation on which you can build all your other prayers. Moreover, a grateful attitude makes it easier for you to communicate with me. So now I'm thinking, as I'm reading this, I'm actually thinking, you know, every time we say, Thank you, God, for having a car to drive. Or thank you, God, for me having clothes to wear. That's a prayer. That's a prayer. Yeah, and then that sentence that said, if you are serious about learning to pray continually, the best approach is to thank me in every situation. So prayer doesn't have to be this time when we're in our prayer closet, which is good, okay? But it can just be all day throughout the day just thanking him for every step of the way thank you for me being able to cook this meal now thank you for me you know being able to hold the door open for someone today whatever it is we can be in prayer continually pray without ceasing now this goes on to read the, the next paragraph here says when your mind is occupied with thanking me you have no time for worrying or complaining. Oh, that's so good. Because remember, we can't do both. I can't be thanking God out of my mouth and then worrying and complaining in my thoughts because as I'm speaking and thanking Him, that's what I'm focused on. So I'm not going to focus on the things that are worrying me or what I might want to complain about. So that's a really good sentence. Let me read that again. When your mind is occupied with thanking me, you have no time for worrying or or complaining. If you practice thankfulness consistently, negative thought patterns will gradually grow weaker and weaker. Draw near to me with a grateful heart 
and my presence will fill you with joy and peace. Oh, that's so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, just just think on that. You know, just meditate. <clears throat> Let me get some water. Meditate on what I just said. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you practice thankfulness consistently, that means regularly, that means over and over, telling the Lord what you're thankful for, those negative thought patterns you have will gradually grow weaker and weaker. Why? Because you're filling yourself with God's presence and <clears throat> the thoughts of God, your thoughts are on God. So you're, the time you spend worrying and complaining will dim, they will grow weaker and weaker. That's really good. Draw near to me with a grateful heart, and my presence will fill you with joy and peace. And it's true. The more you're thankful and not complaining, you have more peace. You absolutely do. That's real good. So today, there's three verses. The first one is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, James 4, verse 8, and Romans 15, verse 13. So if you really want to go deeper, write those down. You can study them on your own or read through them on your own. But I'm going to read them to you now. First one again is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. And it says, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Oh, now that's real good. I was reading something I think and it was talking about how to know the will of God or was I listening to something I, I don't remember but right here if you're struggling wondering what is God's will for your life like what is it you're supposed to be doing and this verse he tells you he says um, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you and Christ so right there he's telling us God's will is for you is to thank him <laughs> So start there. If you're not sure what's going on, just start thanking him for things. And he'll eventually reveal himself to you as you stay in the word and read. Um, it will, he will begin to show you what his will is. But this is a wonderful place to start is by giving thanks. That's God's will for you to give thanks. Amen. Now there's some commentary here. I'm using my um, Life Application Bible, the NIV version today. And the commentary here says, Our joy, prayers, and thankfulness should not fluctuate with our circumstances or feelings. Obeying these three commands, be joyful, pray continually, and give thanks, often goes against our natural inclinations. Now I have to say, because we're learning to heal from the pain of our past here on this channel, these are some really good foundational things you can do that will help you along your healing journey being joyful in all circumstances no matter what you're going through today finding the joy of the Lord that is your strength praying praying continually about your situation praying and asking God to show you the way and be there and then um, also giving thanks so being joyful praying continually and giving thanks are three things that you can do that will help you on your healing journey if we're doing those consistently and continually. Um, and it says here, these three things often go against our natural inclinations. When we make a conscious decision to do what God says, however, we will begin to see people in a new perspective. When we do God's will, we will find it easier to be joyful and thankful. So God's will for you is to be joyful, to pray, and to give thanks. He takes delight in those things. And as we do those things, we do begin to see other people differently. I know I do. I know I can think about the people in my past that have hurt me. And the more I pray for them and give thanks for not what they might have done to me to hurt me, but giving thanks that I'm here today. I'm able to walk and breathe and talk. And I'm still here. So you are too. If you're listening, you're still there. You know, you're still in there. You're still going. And it shows that you're still pressing forward. So just stay in those three things. Joyfulness, a heart of prayer, and giving thanks. All right. Got it? 
So now the next scripture is James chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hmm. Yeah. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. It's like God is calling us, like this Jesus calling. He's calling you to him. He's not going to force himself on you. And if you're not saved or not a believer and you're listening, just keep listening because he's drawing you to him. And the closer you get to him, the closer he gets to you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Because just think about any object as you're walking towards it. The object isn't moving, but you are, but you're getting closer to it. And that's how you grow closer to God. You keep moving and pressing in and seeking him and reading and listening and praying and giving thanks and having joy in your heart. And you, you will eventually get closer to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there's some commentary here. And it says, how can you come near to God? James gives five ways. Number one, submit to God. So if you read chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yield to his authority and will. Commit your life to him and his control, and be willing to follow him. Resisting the devil. Don't allow Satan to entice and tempt you. And number three, wash your hands and purify your hearts. That is, lead a pure life. Be cleansed from sin, replacing your desire to sin with your desire to experience God's purity. Four, grieve and mourn and wail in sincere sorrow for your sins, and don't be afraid to express deep, heartfelt sorrow for what you've done. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. So I'm going to just go ahead, because that commentary was for verses... 7 through 10 so I'm going to go ahead and read that entire those all those verses submit yourselves then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you come near to God and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded grieve mourn and wail change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up and that's so true. You'll be lifted up above all your pain, all that hurt. Because when you grieve and mourn and wail, it, it's good to cry and let things out. I always say journal, get things out of you. If you aren't able to speak on things yet that have happened, journal about them and then eventually have the courage to go back and read out loud what you read and let not, not allow Satan to have the power over you by the things that have happened to you, but release them to Jesus, to God, and He will lift you up. You know, when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will lift you up and bring you to that place of what peace and joy. He really will. And He wants you to bring to Him the things that have hurt you. So He can work, <laughs> he can work it out of you, right, and help you. And I think that's beautiful. I really do. The next verse and the last one today is Romans 15, verse 13. So I did mark them today. So the Bible pages were turning before I got on here. So we can get right to it. The good Bible pages. So I need to take a deep breath and get some water. Are you learning anything? I hope that you are hope that your heart is being blessed and you're being moved by the scriptures because God is calling you to him through these verses today for the simple fact that you're listening uh, and you've been listening for the last like 14 minutes so good for you right that's a beautiful thing so Romans 15 13 says may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do nothing on our own, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that can that can move and change our lives, right? The God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in Him. 
So the more we trust in him, the more we trust his word, despite of our situation and circumstances and problems, the more we trust in him, he fills up with hope. He fills us with joy. He will fill you with peace. Just keep trusting the Lord. Keep listening. Keep coming back. And little by little, keep trusting this wonderful, magnificent, faithful, ever-loving, all-knowing God, your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that was a good word. That was a good word. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to have my devotion time with you. And um, I treasure it. I really do. I treasure my time with Jesus. And just the quiet. Oh, there's nothing like quiet. <laughs> there really isn't. So thank, I thank God for that. I'm thankful for the quiet, Jesus. I'm thankful for time with you today. All right. Well, it's not all right. It's better than always. It's been a great time with you today, and I'm thankful for it. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love, and he lives on the inside of you. We'll talk tomorrow.